often done by Tesla's extravagant boasts that Wardenclyffe can be used to modify the weather. They tore the tower down during the war because uh, the military thought that was there for uh, uh, spy purposes. It took at least three or four charges of dynamite. It was so well built, they almost couldn't demolish it. But uh, before it was uh, completely dismembered, uh, it was experimented with by someone who wanted to project scalar waves. All the birds, seagulls, and everything else left the area. There wasn't one within 20 miles. And the fishermen normally go out there and complain because there were no fish that they could catch within a radius of 10 or 15 miles while that station was operating. That's why uh, you can get a manifestation of uh, some animals acting strangely a day or hours before an earthquake. With his beloved tower in ruins, Tesla retreats into his laboratory and begins far more complex and dangerous experiments. On July 11, 1934, the New York Times reports that Nikola Tesla has developed a death ray, a particle beam weapon that can destroy 10,000 planes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla claims that a plan for producing this device could be constructed in three months at a cost of $2 million. Aside from the devastating offensive capabilities, Tesla believes that if he can successfully build 12 of these towers, his is a weapon to end all wars. Tesla's uh, famous death ray was a device which probably is very widely misunderstood and may have been one of the reasons why uh, he didn't receive some of the respect by the scientific community that he may have well deserved. I think today a lot of people think of a death ray as a, as a phaser or some esoteric type of device you might see in a science fiction movie. It's Tesla's claims terrify the public, but fascinate Hollywood. He is parodied in Superman cartoons as a mad scientist terrorizing New York with an electrothanasia death ray and an army of remote-controlled robots. Tesla's death ray was actually a particle beam weapon, a particle beam weapon which he had developed in the 30s. It was based on the principle of electrostatic acceleration of minute particles of charge, similar to work being done by the Department of Defense. The basic concept is that you take a particle, a micro projectile it's called, and through the use of high voltage, you accelerate it to, to great velocities. The velocity being very high, the particle doesn't have to be very big to do a lot of damage. If you get a stream of these things being accelerated and projected, it will do substantial damage you'd be able to knock down a missile in space, for instance. With only 12 such plants strategically placed around the United States, Tesla claims his teleforce can be used to keep the United States safe from all foes. With the world on the verge of World War II, the United States government takes an active interest in the Tesla death ray. Because he was a patriot, he offered this system to the United States government. The United States government developed and worked and engineered this particle beam weapon beginning in the 40s. We don't know what the extent of the research was or where it went from there, but we do have declassified documents released under the Freedom of Information Act that demonstrate the U.S. government's extreme interest in Tesla's particle beam weapon. The New York Times states that Tesla's death ray, which can send concentrated beams of particles through the air and cause armies of millions to drop in their tracks, is the most important of Tesla's inventions. But in an unprecedented decision, Tesla makes the exploitation of his invention by any single government impossible. He distributes the plans in proprietary segments, like the pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. He gave it to the English, Canadian, American, 
and Russian governments so that they had to sit down together to collaborate if they wanted to realize the whole invention. He realized that people are not conscious enough to handle this information. That's why Tesla put these governments into mutual dependability. There's some evidence that Tesla had given the plans to the Russians who were on our side at that time. In the 1970s, Aviation Week showed a, an article on the Russian particle beam weapon, and Tesla's particle beam weapon didn't surface until about 10 years later when Andrea Puharch brought it out, and the schematics exactly matched the Russian particle beam weapon. Head of U.S. Air Force Intelligence, Major General George Keegan, describes the Soviet system. And what comes out of the end of this little magnetic tube? are pulsed proton beams, 100 billion electron volts, each at energy levels at 10 to the 10 joules. But that's just simply more energy than any man has ever conceived of in the United States. And then you have to bend that beam, and you have to burn it through the atmosphere, and you have to find an object to aim it at. Nikola Tesla sent a proposal to Russian scientists and engineers on May 16, 1935, concerning high voltage and the acceleration of charged particles. He received a list of follow-up questions from them in November of that year. Military scholars contend that the Soviets achieved a 100% Star Wars defense by 1968. We had learned through very sensitive sources that the Soviets in 1977 would test in space the most powerful laser in history, ten times more powerful than any laser we have under development in the U.S. Finally, when I became chief of Air Force Intelligence, my first act of office was to put out an order stating that this device and this development would be the number one priority in Air Force Intelligence. So we set up a meeting with 40 or 50 of the top nuclear scientists in the free world from Edward Teller on down. And these scientists for six years under a sixty million dollar secret project called Project Seesaw have been trying to develop an electron beam to shoot down ICBMs and they failed. And now both in the White House and in the Department of Defense there is an embarrassed silence as the technicians and scientists on both staffs now, having examined the massive body of research we did in the Air Force, suddenly realize that they may have misinformed the American public. Was President Ronald Reagan merely attempting to catch up with the Soviets in his development of the Strategic Defense Initiative? All we can do is make sure the technology becomes the ally and protector of peace. That we build better shields rather than sharper and more deadly swords. In so doing, Maybe we can help to bring an end to the brutal legacy of modern warfare. As a result of America's delays in weaponry development, Tesla's discoveries are only now, nearly 100 years later, being adapted for both offensive and defensive purposes. The latest development, space-based particle beam satellites. The paper which showed the, the technology to make the anti-war machine was eventually published in the proceedings of the, uh, the International Tesla Society. So it is it's in the public domain now how to do it. And, and what is uncanny is that when one knows today's Star Wars program and, and the, the beam weaponry that has been selected, it is almost identical to what was proposed by Tesla. At the time that I came across the documents, I took it to experts in the aerospace field and asked them to look at his technique for generating high voltages. At the time, the aerospace firm I was working with was working on particle beam technology, and they had a study group that was working on proposals to give to the government on 